Okay, well, welcome back to the final um, session of this triumphant conference. Um, and uh, thanks for so many of you for staying. I'm sure you will be rewarded by a lovely Case Marsh Memorial Lecture. I can't see many of us around the case, and it's still feels strange staying at Memorial. But um, today we have Dr. Amina Zazi, who is a lecturer of French at Somerville College in Oxford and an Associate Fellow of UK Higher Education Academy. And so her research interests um, revolve around colonial and post-colonial encounters between France and North Africa for several centuries, and the literary production that have made from these encounters. She did a PhD in French and Francophone studies and received it in 2021 from the University of Berlin. And that read Algerian Identity through, from the Prism of the Sahara, She's got a publication two days ago, surely <laughs> not, um, and that's in it, it, an article in the Journal of Imperial Commonwealth History, and that's entitled Remembering the Colonial Past in Algerian Literature, and speaks to her presentation today. And um, she is in conversation with Edinburgh University Press about the publication of a monograph. So welcome, Amina, and you can see the title of her um, talk today. It's The Sahara as Site of Cross-Cultural Exchange, the Sea and the Scene in French and Algerian Desert Literature. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much for this very generous um, presentation. So um, I would like to start by thanking the SFPS team for inviting me today. It's my honor to be the keynote speaker, especially because my very first conference in the UK as a first year PhD student was, was in 2018. So I'm really happy to be back as a keynote speaker. And I, was, I told Sophie yesterday that she raised the bar too high about uh, her keynote speaker, you know, and I tried to live to the expectations of the keynote speakers in the SFPS. Uh, and thanks also to the audience for making it till the end. I know how hard it is to keep up with, you know, um, the rhythm and the intensity of all the papers and the panel sessions. So thank you for, for making it until the very last presentation. Great. So. Um, my presentation today will be about the ways in which the Sahara Desert acts as an accurate analytical prism through which we can understand histories, memories, and identities. And I'll take up as an example the Algerian literature and the ways in which Algerian authors engage critically with the French one in ways that both, both defy, resist, but also celebrate and per perpetuate the colonial tropes. So we see the dynamics between the seer and the scene. I'm going to take 20th and 21st century examples of literatures and figures and explore through them the complex relationship in a post-colonial setting of the seer and the scene, the traveler and the traveler, as coined by Mary Louise Pratt. Um, I want to study their co-presence, interaction, interlocking understandings and practices often with asymmetrical relations of power. And I think this is really important, the asymmetrical relations of power. However, with the colonial roots of the term travel writing, the travelees are also, are always uh, denied presence or that they are erased from the narratives. So we'll see how the um, Algerian authors uh, deal with this. So I'm, I'm going to take the example of Mouloud Ma'amri La Traversée, a novel about a crossing um, um, in Algeria from the north to the south, which implies, which, which emerged from in, against the um, backdrop of the Algerian independence, and that also negotiates uh, the um, the plurality, what uh, Abdel Kabir Khabib calls the Maghreb pluriel. So it really discusses the um, the plurality, but also the difficulty of plurality in post um, in post independent Algeria. I'm going to take an example of Rashid al Jubaras um, which also emerged not in the immediate aftermath of independence, but against the backdrop of the Black Decade, which is this very tragic moment of the Algerian history, where there was a civil war uh, between the Fisk of Group, Front Islamic Jusadu, uh, who targeted specifically the Francophone citizens. And some Francophone of the Algerian officers were also assassinated and victims of this. So we'll see how travel writing and the Sahara Desert acts as a space of healing and also of, um, of healing uh, in personal but also national network. Um, I'll take as an example also Malika Moukadem, um, Le Siècle des Sotrelles, and I think Malika Moukadem is a 
very well-known author, especially in Francophone studies. Um, and what is interesting in her work is that she's a born nomad, but she engaged, engages with figures like Isabelle Eberhardt. And what is interesting is that Isabelle Eberhardt um, gives freedom to her characters. Uh, we'll also see that Isabelle Eberhardt did not only gain posthumous um, celebration through Francophone authors, but also Arabophone authors, such as uh, Said Khatibi. Um, so he published this um, novel in 2016 entitled 40 Years Waiting for Isabel. I'll also uh, discuss Esmina Khadar's Secure le Mirage, which is an understudied novel. Um, Yasmina Khadar might be very well known in the Francophone world as well, and he's also born in, in, in the Sahara. So it's interesting to see how he reflects on his place of birth, but also how he engages with. Um, travel, French travel writers like uh, Roger Frison Roche and uh, his uh, Piste de Oublié. So we see how Yasmina Khadra, as someone who was born in the Sahara, engages with travel writing to rediscover <coughs> his place on earth. And we'll also see how Yasmina Khadra manifests but also celebrates the figure of Charles de Foucault, discovered by officer, who's also at least a subject of discussion in post colonial studies. So we'll see the ways in which Yasmina Khadra celebrates him, contrary to Rashid Bojidara, for instance, who just denigrates his presence in, um, in Tilimun. I will finish by um, a novel that stands in stark contrast with all the novels, uh, which is the, the one published by uh, Hajj Ahmed Sadiq, um, who's also a local author from Adrar, and I'll show you where Adrar is. Um, so a novel entitled Memleket Ziwan, or The Kingdom of Ziwan. So we see how, um, Far from John writing, Hajj Ahmed Siddiq engages, engages with the theme of the desert in ways that I think defy all the francophone um, representations. So, um, Mary Louise Pratt argues that travel is studied overwhelmingly from the perspective of the traveler. And it's perfectly possible and extremely interesting to study it from the perspective of those who participate in the receiving end, that is the travelers. However, as I said, the travelers are always reduced to lifeless trope, they are erased from the narrative or denied existence um, in, in the narrative. One such example is the quote by Meursogast. Um, so this traveler <coughs> right, went to the Sahara and wrote that the desert s'imagine d'abord chez les Arabes, à peu près là, aride, blanc, avec une végétation desséchée, roussie par la chaleur. De ce mot banal, euh, les Occidentaux ont fait, lors des conquêtes coloniales en particulier, un nom propre qui a désigné les plaines désertiques de la côte de l'Ouest africain jusqu'au territoire égyptien et soudanais. So, exactly like um, what Fanon um, uh, explains or uh, asserts, les Arabes uh, étaient quotidiennement liés et transformés en décor sahariens. So the, the travelers, or Arabs in the Sahara, were reduced to a peripheral decor. They were just part of the decor instead of um, being able to give meaning to the place in which they were living. However, I think it's important also to mention scholars who Deconstructed this idea by, like Charlotte de Montigny, um, who wrote in Le Livre des Déserts, edited by uh, Bruno Doucet, Dans Itinéraire scientifique, littéraire et spirituel, and, and she asserts, Ce que l'on nomme exploration est en réalité le recueillement des noms locaux, ou la nouvelle dénomination occidentale de ces lieux par les Européens qui remplissent les blancs de leurs cartes. And this reminds me of a publication of Ellen Blay, The Mirage de la Carte ou la Construction de, de l'Algérie Coloniale. So they were really like uh, um, filling the blanks of their maps instead of the local ones. So, cependant, ces lieux étaient déjà connus des peuples autochtones, ainsi qu'en témoigne l'exemple des Touaregs, qui établissaient de plus fort longtemps, bien avant les Européens, des cartes concrètes faites sur la terre au moyen de sable et de cailloux. Terra, terra incognita, donc une terre inconnue, des Occidentaux auraient tant dû ajouter. And I think this is a really strong um, quote, which really highlights that the Sahara was um, a, a tabula rasa, or uh, une terre inconnue aux yeux des, 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 des voyageurs. 
So to deconstruct this very notion of, um, uh, of dividing maybe the place of the Sahara between the Arabs and the, and the Westerners, between the, um, the um, travelers and the travelers, <coughs> Ibrahim al Kuno, sorry, who's one of the very first Indian authors to write about the Sahara, challenges in his works the very divisions is in post colonial literature. Divisions, be it the, as Marie Louise Pratt put it, like the, the landscape is aesthetized, and second, the density of meaning uh, in the passage is sought, and then the relational mastery predicted between the seer and the seen. So through the writing of um, Ibrahim Kuni, what he does is to highlight the ways in which the Sahara is one, through the concept of the oneness of existence, which is uh, the wihda to wujud in Sufi principle. Which means that, for example, for in, in this um, novel, Nazif al-Hajar, all the characters are named after the names of the Sahara. And the protagonist's name is Asuf, and Asuf in Tuareg means solitude. For instance, there is a, a, a protagonist whose name is Tenere, and Tenere is the desert. So the novels, all his novels, deploy spiritual symbolism to the Sahara and deconstruct the very notion of saying the Libyan Sahara, the Algerian Sahara, the Nigerian Sahara. So he's really against the, uh, the, the divisions and the hegemony, the separation and distinction, and also the categorization of the, of the Sahara. However, we see that what emerges from Algerian literature is a different understanding of encounters um, in the contact zone that is um, the To start with Mouloud Mohamed and La Traversée. So, La Traversée is a crossing by French and Algerian authors. And Mouloud Mohamed is an anthropologist, an Algerian poet, but also a writer. And Berber, so he was really uh, pro Berber. So, um, so there is this voyage, ce traversé, ce, ce, this crossing uh, by French and other <coughs> characters who explore, uh, sorry, plurality and the difficulty of métissage. And the difficulty of métissage in um, post-colonial Algeria was about you know, escaping the straitjacket of nationhood, <coughs> that is one language, one culture, and one religion. And we see through la traversée the ways in which it's very difficult to for Arabs, for instance, who live in the north, to accept the spiritual practices of those who live in the south, like the Tuaregs. So we'll see um, through La Traversée that there's this crossing of the borders, imaginary borders, and, um, and also imposed by, by the, the, by the post-colonial regime as well. And we have this quote, donc, ce regard sent encore le désert, il a besoin d'être cassé. And this says a lot, I think, um, about post-colonial Algeria. So the ones who did not fit within the straight jacket of nationhood needed not to be uh, included in, in, in the Algerian um, um, <coughs> So there is no, another collection of short stories by Mouloud Marbury entitled um, Escale. And, the, and in Escale, uh, there is a, a short story entitled Le Téniré à ta vie. Um, donc, le ténéré, in Le Ténéré à ta vie, Mouloud Mahamouri explores uh, Western narratives and completely reverses them. Um, and he wants really to deconstruct the, the, the notion of the Arab lands and what he calls les images faciles de la, de la représentation du désert. Donc, as we can see here to um, guide you geographically, Le Ténéré is, so belongs to the north of Niger, south of Algeria, um, and northwestern Chad. Um, and what 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 the Mulud is exactly like Ibrahim al um does um, is is trying to challenge the, for instance, the lines set by um, the Roman borders um, fortifications to who try to tame the Sahara through the through uh, the establishment of the limes, thinking that they are uh, places that were in, impossible to inhabit by to be inhabited by a human species. So, Mouloud um, de Mamouri speaks about le ténéré à ta vie, donc le ténéré des ancêtres, le ténéré uh, qui appartient à la, le, le, le ténéré that belongs to, to North Africa, and not to, again, so not to Algeria, not to, to, not to uh, Niger, not to Chad. So, the, le ténéré that belongs to North Africa, because um, in, in, in the short story, he speaks about, for instance, those who live in Niger, and, and one day went to what 
we, today we call the south of Algeria. They went there for food for their camels. But today there are borders, so there are some political, um, um, there is a political press, a process to go through before they can get into the, the Algerian Sahara. So uh, it's interesting to see here that Mouloud Amri is just trying to deconstruct his image facile uh, as a way to um, celebrate the desert as being a so to move on to the Black Decade that to Rashid Bouchard was Timmy Moon. Don't, <coughs> what, what Timmy Moon represents for Rashid Bouchard is a place where he needed to go to, to the, the, the voyage, so this, this, this travel writing needed to, he, he needed to go to uh, Timmy Moon and he needed to write about his experience in Timmy Moon. So if you see the, the first quote here, and the kick dans ma mémoire, et je retrouve une origine encore plus lointaine à mon malaise. Look, um, and I think this reminds me of also Marcel Proust, the <coughs> of the experience of Rashid Boujida in the Sahara um, reminds him of some of his personal but also national memory, especially um, amidst the, the, the atrocities of the Black Decade. And then we know Marcel Proust and La Madeleine de Marcel Proust, but for Rashid Boujida, it's not l'expérience gustative, mais l'expérience um, olfactive, so the olfactory experience. And we have in this quote, comme si la permanence de ces odeurs familiales allait de pair avec la permanence des odeurs sahariennes, de Timimo. Donc les, les odeurs familiales, bien les odeurs sahariennes, uh, triggered the, the, the uh, odors of, the, of, of, the, of his families. And he could just um, think through um, the trauma that he had in his childhood through <coughs> the travel writing to the, to the Sahara. And then, by the end, interestingly, um, the, the narrator says, Dans le désert, j'arrive à évacuer le trop plein de sentiments étranges, de désirs d'automutilation et de sensations terribles. So the Sahara Desert here acts as a healer. So the, the voyage, la, la, the, 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 the travel here, um, I mean, difficult periods of the Algerian history, acts as a healer. So it's a place where he can reconstruct his. Um, uh, maybe his memory, but also his trauma, personal and on, on a national level. However, the narrator of Timmy Moon refers to this religious edifice, which is l'église et la tombe de Charles de Foucault, as un fantôme venu d'ailleurs. So it's a ghost that comes from uh, elsewhere in the world. So he demeans the colonial presence, and um, he, he just denigrates what uh, John Mackenzie was as cultures of display or the material, the colonial material culture that we find in post colonial societies. So, this, um, la l'église ou bien uh, the church still is in Angola, so it still is in, in Algeria, um, but clearly Rashid Bouchadara discloses this unwelcome edifice. And we see how Esmina Khadara stands um, in stark contrast to uh, the, uh, Rashid Bouchadara's. Um, so, to carry on with the Black Decade, to speak about Malika Muqaddam. <coughs> so, Malika Muqaddam's novel, um, these ones emerged from, from, from the period of the Black Decade, but they were written in France. However, the, the writing or the movement, the, the nomadism or the, the travel writing was imaginary. So, her characters moved from um, where she was, Montpellier to her place of birth, Renatza. So we have l'interdit, and, and I think the titles of the novel say a lot about the themes. So the first one is l'interdit. So the, the protagonist, whose name is, um, so here is Renatza, um, so it's in the southwest of Algeria. So the, the protagonist's uh, name, um, Sultana in l'interdit, so she's in Montpellier, and she wants to go back to her place of birth, which is, um, um, and she tries to see if she can stay there. She tries to see if she, if she can just make earn a living with her, with her, with her family. And then, just like I think the Kofi character, she's not. She's rejected by her society. The Rebbe des Assassins, Kenza, from the title, we can see that um, it was really difficult for the characters to be able to dream. And it's the, the, the place of um, amidst the, the Sahara. So there is two point, there are two points here. The fact of being within the confines of Dursur, 
but also being within the black decade. So the black decade, there were, there were the atrocities taking place in the north. And then women or female characters um, who were in the south and who were already um, um, suffering from the patriarchal submission. Uh, so they were even more handicapped with the black decade. Um, and also she publishes this, 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 this novel, La Nuit de la Lézarde. And from the, from the cover, we can see that there is Aksar. But la, la, la protagonist or the, her, the heroine stays exactly where the, where the story takes place and dies where the story takes place. So for Sultana and Kenza, they choose exile. They go back to the to the to Qanadza or Al Nakhla, so they go back to their own. <coughs> I can't make it, and but then go back to exile. So there is this movement back and forth for the Qanadza and Montpellier. And then in Almi de la Lizard, everything happens in Maqsar. However, for la, Le Siècle des Centrelles, which is really interesting, Yasmin is allowed freedom because of her father Mahmoud who interestingly bears the name of Isabel Eberhardt, so the male name that Isabel Eberhardt chose, chose for herself, the Mahmoud Saadi. And Mahmoud um, advises his daughter to follow the footsteps of Isabel Eberhardt, to be as free as the, as the Rumia, so this Western, the non-Muslim Western wars, um, that she needed to be free, um, like the Rumia, and she needed also to where, um, um, like, to trans, to, to go through transgender and, and wear like black uh, male disguise to be unnoticed by her society. So she stays in Canada, but she's allowed freedom. She, she's the only one who doesn't go to exile, and she's the only one who doesn't die because she's allowed to think differently of her peers because of a Western traveler. So uh, for l'interdit, for instance, um, we have this quote that Malika Mukadam uses. Les mots de ces hommes et les mots du village abîment le paysage. It contrary to the, to the little prince, or the petit prince here, that is just a reference for her youngest character, whose name is Delila. So Delila is allowed to just think of le petit prince and read le petit prince and be able to maybe imagine the Sahara as being liberating, as being inspiring, as much as Le Petit Prince found, found the Sahara. So she allows her characters to gradually read French literature, to be able to imagine different destinies for themselves, like that is different from the one of the character herself. And like Saint-Exupéry, Menika Mokadam tries also to have this very, um, positive experience in the Sahara, which she just couldn't because of les hommes, because of the presence of men. Um, to move on to La Nuit de la Lézarde, so we have this quote here, that Nour nomad son tribu. Elle traversait des déserts sans arriver au bout de son vide intérieur. Donc, not only Balika Mokadam était Mounour, pardon, um, with an Arabic name, which means light, so, elle était une nomade sans tribu, mais elle, elle, elle avait vécu un vide intérieur. Et ce vide intérieur, justement, l'a amené à mourir. Et justement, and her death, donc, uh, Malika Mokadam explains her death as being degraded. Donc, elle regarde de loin avec une figure d'amour. And here she died. Even when she died, she was <coughs> looking far away with that, being optimistic, avec une figure d'amour which reminds us of the le mythe de Sisyphe d'Albert Camus. And in the mythe de Sisyphe, donc, il y a une mort volontaire. Mourir volontairement suppose qu'on a reconnu, <coughs> même instinctivement, donc, le caractère dérisoire de cette habitude. L'absence de raison profonde de vivre. Et, ça, et donc, Noor vivait, avait cette absence profonde de vivre, parce qu'elle vivait un vide intérieur. Le caractère, le caractère insensé de cette agitation quotidienne et l'inutilité de la souffrance. Donc, there was, um, to, there was une, une mort volontaire, une, une, une absence de raison profonde de vivre, mais aussi une inutilité de la souffrance, which, which meant that Noor had to die. Plus, Noor wasn't allowed to think of Saint-Exupéry or Malika Mokadem. We only have two lines about Simone de Beauvoir. She just <coughs> buys the novel and knows that uh, there are two lines about the novel. Um, uh, J'ai acheté uh, le livre de Simon de Beauvoir. Il a beaucoup de mots et il parle des femmes. And the next page he dies. 
So thinking about, reflecting about the, um, the quote of it, what Saeed here, um, cultural imperialism, that the European is received by natives into the circle of intimacy as a substitute for a dead native. So I like to think here that um, when La Femme a du terre, donc Janine, le personnage de, de uh, Albert Camus, donc Janine, through her exploration of the Sahara, through her first experience with the Sahara, um, felt that she, th there was a rebirth in her. Donc elle tournait avec, ses, uh, avec eux et le même cheminement immobile, la réunissait peu à peu à son être le plus profond où le froid et le désir maintenant se combattaient. And we have, um, as a, the last quote, the last sentence here, elle respirait, elle oubliait le froid, le poids des êtres, la vie des morts tout figé, la longue angoisse de vivre et de mourir, which is in stark contrast to those angoisse de vivre et de, et, et de survivre, plutôt que de mourir. Il lui semblait retrouver ses racines. Donc, for Noor, she didn't have roots, even though she was born in the Sahara. And for the, for the travelers, um, they find their roots in this very place that the nomads are suffocating. Uh, la sève montant à nouveau dans son corps qui ne tremblait plus. Donc, I, really, it's, I think it's really interesting to see that, that when la femme adultère uh, was reborn, la nuit, the nul died. So there is, a, I think there really is a way to just analyze the substitution for a dead native by a European, the, the substitution of a traveler by a traveler. So to, to think about how the, the figure of Isabelle Eberhardt, but also um, the, her, her um, book, Dans l'ombre chaude de l'islam, which was published uh, posthumously. Um, so Malika Mukaddam and Isabelle Eberhardt were fascinated by Kanadza, by the place, place of birth of, of, yes, in, of uh, Malika Mukaddam. However, their representation about Kanadza is different. Donc pour Eberhard, pour Eberhard, Knezza est un, ksal, un grand ksal en tube de teinte foncée et chaude, précédé par la gauche de beaux jardins très verts. Pour Malika Moukadem, Knezza n'était plus qu'une grande caserne et une prison tristement renommée. Pour Isabelle Eberhard, à Knezza, il y avait des jardins, le calme et la semblance douce des autres jardins sahariens. Et pour Isabelle, Um, elle aime son Sahara et d'un amour obscur et mystérieux. <coughs> Déjà, Malika Mokhatem <coughs> refers to the Sahara as being Laba. So she's in Montpellier and she thinks about her place of birth as being Laba. So there is a distance that she posts between herself and Kalanza. Laba, les couleurs du crépuscule ne sont plus ni un apaisement, ni une incitation à la règle, mais l'image cosmique du sang. L'image cosmique du sang des victimes refers to um, all the massacres that took place during the Black Decade. So for, for um, Yasmin, for Malika Mokhadam, Kanadza was just a place where people were dying instead of people um, enjoying themselves within the, the, uh, the green gardens. But as I said, donc, um, what <coughs> Malika Mokhadam does with their heart is to imagine different destinies for the characters. So, um, Isabel Eberhardt converted to Islam, yes, but it was a Sufi conversion to Islam. Um, and and Malika Muqaddam gets the narrative to say that Eberhardt's feminism form of Islam, donc déjà c'est un Islam qu'elle considère féminin, féministe, uh, a toujours comblé des yesmi. So this Islam allowed women to transgress uh, gender norms and to, be, to, to um, wear jilaba, which is a, a main threat in, 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 in the south of uh, Algeria, but also to wear a man's name, uh, which is Mahmoud. So we have here the, the quote um, by, um, or, or what, uh, what um, Yasmin's father tells her. That he says, tu devrais plutôt faire le contraire ou rester toujours en garçon. Tu serais plus tranquille, suggère Mahmoud en souriant. As-tu remarqué qu'avec ta djellaba, les hommes ne te prêtent aucune attention 
So really to reach this emancipation, to reach freedom. Um, and she says in We Come Now with Mia Isabel, so she's also a, always um, the sole point of reference for, for Yasmin. Pense-t-elle avec un sourire complice? So her father was, was just encouraging her to incarnate, to embody the figure of Emma Hart to be able to reach the freedom and emancipation that the author himself couldn't reach. There is also the sacralization of Eberhard's storm that we can see here, and which is in Algeria, in Ain um, Safra. So uh, Yasmin says, Le tombeau de la Romia d'Isabelle est un lieu de pèlerinage obligé pour Yasmin. So this is how far the sacralization of the Romia goes. But then, uh, Malika Mokadam always refers to, to Isabel Eberhard as being the Romia. Romia. But I think one, one question here is, is she also othered, even if she is accepted in, in the Algerian uh, community? Um, and there's, a, there's a, um, an article by Leila Sabar entitled Isabelle Berhardt, Isabelle de l'Algérien. Well, it's not Isabelle de l'Algérien, it's Isabelle de l'Algérien. Uh, but for many people, she remains the Romia, she remains the other. Um, and we have this quote here, J'irai revoir la tombe de la Romia, se promet-elle pour confronter sa fragile sérénité. So, Eberhardt is still this sole point of reference for freedom to be able just to, to be composed. So, one might be forgiven that Isabel Eberhardt, because she, because she writes in French, would only be celebrated by Francophone authors, but Asaïd um, Khatibi, who is an Arabophone author, uh, Algerian as well, and was born in, um, so he says here, um, Isabelle Berhardt and her manuscript came in time to save me from the border that occupied me for so long. And I don't know exactly did I just like her texts, or did I like her as a woman? And let's do I have to and we see here that Isabelle Berhardt was, was not only interesting as a, as a writer and author, but also as a figure herself, because of her um, non-conformist um, figure. She was celebrated for her writing, but also, and we can see here in the very cover that Saïd Khatibi um, chooses, it's the, it's the, the, the picture of Zabel Eberhardt. It's only her. And then, similar to Yasmin, but what um, the narrator says here, uh, he would like to be buried at an equal distance from the tomb of <coughs> Isabelle Berhardt and Safiya Ketou. And Safiya Ketou comes as a, a very quick reference, and he, she's also a, um, an, an Algerian author. Uh, and he would like to be written on his tombstone. He lies at the Hajj, ha, Abdullah Hajj Joseph Rinchar, inhabited by the spirit of the Romania. So again, there is this. Um, other way, Isabelle Eberhardt has been the Romia, but being at the same time haunted by her presence. Um, and I think also Isabelle Eberhardt, what she, what she allows, um, uh, at least in, in uh, the context of my thinking of um, Said Khatibi, is the affirmation of hybridity. Because as we see here in this quote, I'm not Algerian in the sense of Algerian, an Algerian is supposed to be, despite my green passport. Nor am I French, as befits the son of an ancient family spanning centuries. And Isabel Eberhardt herself was born Russian, but she never felt Russian, so she wanted to move beyond the boundaries of her country to be able to tame the Sahara, but also domesticate its, uh, um, the Sahara and be friends with, with the population. Um, there is also the affirmation of the mastery of the seer. So if you think of Isabelle Eberhardt as being the traveler and the seer, what Zayd Khadibi does is just affirmate this position of, of mastery. And he says, if Isabelle Eberhardt had returned to Busada to Delhi, she would have written something different. She's, it, this is the Red City where I have been living for 40 years. I love her as Isabelle loved her. Even the love that he owes for his, for his city is, just, is comparable to the one of Isabel Eberhardt. And he's saying, I've been living in Musada for 40 years. And the title of the novel is 40 Years Waiting for Isabel Eberhardt. So the time he le lived was just waiting for Isabel Eberhardt and being haunted by her presence. Um, and what's interesting here is that 
she's got the position of the commanding view, of the one who has the, the possibility to um, represent Busada in, in magnificent, magnificent terms, and he would be inspired. So I think Isabelle Gerhardt just allows Saïd Khabibi to imagine differently his place of birth, because she was fascinated by his place of birth. To move on to Yasmina Khadaraz, and his celebration of the colonial figures. I think what's important to note here is that Isabella Berhardt for Melika Mokadem and Said Khabibi. For Ismila Khadar, Isabella Berhardt is just a rainbow of Femina. It's just a reference. However, for him, Charles de Foucault, fallait le voir en larmes et en ferveur, le visa soudain radieux malgré la brûlure des fourrières, la poitrine remplie d'une liesse astrale. And Charles de Foucault was a French cavalry officer, geographer, and apologist, and then a Catholic monk in, 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 in Algeria. And he was also canonized in 2022. So um, Yasmina Khadara was also born in Qanadza, and he is really, really, he likes to manifest um, uh, Charles de Foucault, and we'll, we'll see other, another drama writer. But Charles de Foucault is at least a subject of discussion in post-colonial studies because um, he's considered as a auxiliaire incomparable de l'entreprise coloniale. So he was considered as a spy in, in, in the Algerian Sahara, um, as this quote here by Claudeau Howard. And Ouattara, who is also an African researcher, reflects on his life in an article he entitled La canonisation de Charles de Foucault serait un déni d'histoire. Um, and in his own words, uh, he says, il est l'auteur d'un monumental dictionnaire Tuareg français, and the French was so good at uh, creating dictionaries of Tuareg français. Um, and even so, they, they, they mastered the, um, the alphabet of the Tuareg, which is the Tamashak, and they mastered the language of the Tuareg, which is uh, which is Tifina, sorry, the, the alphabet is Tifina, and the, they mastered the language, which, which is the Tamashat. They mastered the, the so the, the, they were really in a position to write the Dictionnaire Tuareg Français. However, il faut pas occulter son nationalisme et ses fortes convictions colonialistes. And so, um, one might argue that maybe literature is also a way of celebrating authors, and it's not like, a thesis or a book, where, 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 or literary, uh, is far from being a literary critic, his position about Charles de Foucault is at least a subject of discussion. Again, so um, there is this novel by Roger Frison Roche, La Pistouille, so this German writer who goes to who goes to the Sahara, who, who specifically goes to Le Ténéré, right? So he does this crossing and goes to Le Ténéré. And what is Hadra tells us that Il est ébloui par l'imaginaire de l'écrivain Savoyard Roger Frison Roche. Je suis venu dans le hogar, qui est venu pardon, dans le hogar, se mesurer au grand terme. Je suis parti à la recherche de sa piste oubliée. So Ismail Akhadara, to read it, la piste oubliée de Roger Frison Roche, goes to follow the traces of Roger Frison Roche. Le roman de Mansak, and Ismail Akhadara, again, he was born in, in the Sahara. So it's interesting to see how he wants to follow the traces of Frison Roche. What is even more interesting is the fact that La Piste Oubliée était about the, it was about the, the, the Ténéré, right? So it was the course into the Ténéré. And here we have the quote that um, il est venu, donc, and he's speaking about Roger Frison Roche, venu dans le hogar se mesurer au grand terg. And if we see here le hogar, which is here, le hogar, and then le grand terg, they are two different contexts and two places and spaces that are far apart geographically, but also that are different in terms of the herbe, c'est le le sable des dunes, and le hogar, c'est les plateaux. So it's, it's really, it's really interesting to see that he's referring to uh, there's an oxymoron <coughs> statement here that might be interpreted as uh, as Yasmin Khadana wanting to do maybe a palimplastic uh, presentation or reconstruction of the of the of the Sahara. Um, maybe when, when speaking about the Grand Terg, he meant uh, Roger Frison Roche, the rendezvous de, de, de SN Dylan, because this novel about SN Dylan is the one about the Grand Terg, which is Jan. So there is, um, so I would really want to interview Smin just to think through the ways in which he's um, speaking about the different uh, contexts around the Sahara and 
how he's engaging with the novels um, uh, that do not seem to be maybe manifesting uh, the, the travel is not the same. Going to the Tenere is very different from going to Ascendilan and going to uh, Janet. So to finish with um, the, 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 the novel of Hajj Ahmed Siddiq from Lekat Ziwan, uh, where the author speaks about Adrar, so this uh, region of the deep south, uh, really, uh, especially uh, the, the author he criticizes and deconstructs, deconstructs the notion of the legendary desert of travel writers. And what is interesting here is that um, uh, the ways in which Abraham looks at the, the Sahara as being liberating and being the, this, because there is the Sufi understanding of Islam in the Sahara, she so looks at it as, as liberating, but the local author, Hajj Ahmed Sadir, looks at this as being the a curse of spiritual practices and cultural frictions. Because uh, in, the, in, 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 in Adrar, so in his, um, in his, um, in his novel, which is also a reflection of reality, people would not want to go to the hospitals, but they would want to go to the Talab or the Marabou, the Nessan. So they wouldn't believe in higher education, but they would believe in superstition. And this is really criticized by him. So I think the, the simple answer that uh, Hajj Ahmed Sadiq gives to the famous question of Gayatri Spiva, can this about to speak, is no. Because there is a quote here, as speaking about his sister, as for my sister Mayamo's education and her peers in Doksur, woe betide who talks about it because their schooling was forbidden. And I think this explains clearly the novels of, the, of Malika Muqaddam and the reason why she chose exile. Because within the confines of Luxor, women were denied rights and were denied education, were denied inheritance. And this is what Medica Muqaddam tries to unveil and denounce. So um, Hajj Ahmed Sadiq really goes beyond the representation of the Sahara as, as a peripheral decor or as a, as, as, as a legendary desert, but it's, it's more complex. And I think he stand, starts, stands in stark contrast. When I was reading him, I thought maybe Arab furniture is interested more in the complex paradigms of the Sahara, but then reading Said Khatibi in Arabic as well um, made me think that it's not the language but maybe are the convictions of the of the of the authors. Not like so after this journey in the Sahara, I would like to finish by saying that maybe in a word increasingly understood as globalized, the notion of identity and, and memory is constantly being rethought and reimagined as being in a constant state of flux and anguish. Um, and I think through travel writing, we can understand at least the ways in which the author's voices converge and diverge, informing us in different ways about the complex dynamics of post-colonial societies and also what emerges from the encounters in different contact zones. Um, and I would like to maybe think about the, the future of, of Algeria, or the, of the, I would like to think that we can maybe construct or we can work towards a future, future Algerian genealogy as a, maybe as an infinite constellation whose unpredictable movements and entanglements are themselves a source of creative and dynamic potential. Thank you so much. Thank you.